Hello, in this video, I'm going to be drawing Cranefly. Uh, this photo is by James Rubin. I'm just going to put the photo to the side over here. And I'm going to first start off by drawing the ball of the head. Uh, just to note that a Cranefly is not a mosquito. Yes, I had to Google that. <laughs> I, I thought it was, but they were not. Ball of the head, now I'm going to draw the uh, thorax, which is like right here. It's a bit more ellipsoid shaped. And I think I put it too far over to the right. It should have been a bit more centered. Kind of like that. And now for the abdomen. And the abdomen's kind of uh, hidden. You know, based on the perspective, I mean, it's there. We can actually see it. It's not totally hidden by the wings, but, um, you know, it kind of sits behind the thorax here in 3D space. So that is something important to uh, keep in mind because there is going to be some overlap. And dealing with that overlap is important to know that it's there. Oh, I drew it a little bit to veer to the right again. That was right, but too big. Yeah, I think kind of like that. I'm going to show you, I'm going to draw some uh, contours over the head, thorax, and abdomen to kind of show you how it's all coming together, together. Oh, just to note, over here there is going to be like um, a connection to that abdomen between the thorax and abdomen. It's all there. Okay, now I want to draw the legs. It's an insect, so it has uh, six legs, and I'm going to draw some just drill lines for them. But first I'm going to draw the pilot holes, which are going to be on the bottom of the thorax. I'm going to quickly Google off to the side the anatomy of uh, crane flies because I may have placed those pilot holes wrong because with a lot of bugs it very it really varies how the legs are connected to the underside. And it's usually incredibly frustrating if you can't see it. So I placed these uh, pilot holes for them very far apart. More often than not, there's a lot of obscuring going on. Like they're usually, and not usually, but like sometimes they can be close together. I realize like with certain insects that have like legs that they use to fling themselves. It's like their back two legs are usually much further in the back to help them jump or glide. I'm not able to find another photo online of the underside to see the attachment, but yeah. Oh well, I'll roll with what I have and draw some uh, just drill lines for them. Oh, I also want, well, you know, I'll draw these first. So the interesting thing is like the back leg, which is a little bit obscured. You can kind of see it like there. It's like over here. That one's kind of like that. That one's kind of like that. And don't think that you have to execute all of these in uh, a single line. Sometimes I catch myself executing these lines in one go. 
when more often than not, I may have been better not doing that. It's kind of a bad habit that I've picked up, but sometimes I just feel confident executing the given line and I go ahead and do that. But I am trying to make uh, some comparisons, like, you know, these kind of align a little bit, but like it's like a little bit extended that way. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. The legs are very, they're kind of like matched sticks. That's how I would describe them. And like you can tell like this leg kind of like goes down, goes up, kind of hits over here. I try to make all of these uh, comparisons. And the important thing that I want to note is when I first started drawing, I was just not even looking for those and I was getting them completely wrong. Um, I should have given more thought into it back then, but it was something that, like I feel like I had to fail a lot at drawing until I picked up on uh, doing it the right way. Just my uh, two cents on the subject for that. Okay, now I want to draw pilot holes for the wings. The wings are like not on the underside, and the important thing here is you see the six pilot holes I made for the legs over here. Um, the wings are kind of like more on the upper lower back. It's kind of like right, I'm gonna draw like a slit for them. And I'll try to make it a bit thicker. Oops. Oh, I undid too much. What did I do? No, come back legs. I guess I'm drawing those legs again. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry to swear. Ah, so frustrating. Kind of like that. Should have been. I'm kind of like that. Okay. Hopefully this time I will not mess up those back pilot holes. And I've always debated whether I'm better off trying to draw that first. Because like when you do look at the back, they may have like a bit of a thickness to them, but I'm just drawing like lines to try to show how they encapsulate the uh, the wings. The wings um, are interesting because they really adhere to the body. <clears throat> but I'm gonna first start off by drawing the uh, the eyes. The eyes of our crane flyer, they're very bulging. And um, I wanted to like add the shape before I draw the eyes, kind of like the skull shape, because I need to also in attach these uh, antenna and what I can only assume is a proboscis of some sort. And uh, it kind of extends a little bit beyond the head. I mean, it's on it, but it's kind of like this unique shape uh, that, like, it kind of acts as a nest. Oops. For what did I get rid of? Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, um, yeah, it's an interesting shape that kind of extends a little bit beyond the ball of the head and kind of wraps around, kind of comes again. It's an interesting form. And you know, that eye kind of looks more like a half ellipse. And I'm going to, uh, color in the eyes because I think it makes seeing them a little bit easier. And I've always liked uh, bulbous eyes on insects. I don't know. It makes them look more friendly than they probably are. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm going to draw this eye. Kind of bulges out significantly and wraps around back. Okay, now what I want to do, I want to draw um, gestural lines for the, what I can only assume are the antenna. And uh, they connect, the important thing, I'm gonna have to draw some structure eventually, but like, it connects like right there and right there. If you look closely, I put like two dots. One of them is like veering that way. Well, actually that one's really straight. 
One of them is veering that way. And the other one's kind of like doing that. Well, even more pushed. And then it has a proboscis. It's kind of like under here. It's a bit difficult to see because it's a bit obscured by its uh, antenna. It shouldn't get that far, about that far. And uh, the antenna are very straight. I, I actually have an insect identification book, and it's a bit more general than what I was hoping for, but it does show some interesting things in which there are a lot of variations when it comes to uh, an antenna on insects, if you look close enough. So I'm drawing back. Yeah, the proboscis is pretty, or what I think is a proboscis, is a bit obscured, kind of hard to draw through considering everything else that's uh, going on. So the head, it's kind of, I'm seeing like a thing here. It kind of looks like a bit like a, a very small teardrop. Oh, the other thing, there's like structure that kind of adds on over here that I wanted to put on. Perhaps I didn't show it enough. Um, but yeah, there's like a teardrop. It's really hard for me to show. I tried to draw it, but if you look uh, near the, its uh, forehead right here, it's kind of like a shape kind of like that and it looks like it's an additional structure that kind of hangs on its uh, head i don't know what it's used for or what it exactly uh, means but it's something <laughs> okay so now i want to draw the wings quickly just to kind of summarize them now i'm trying to think of a comparison i'm kind of using my fingers and you really can't see it it's kind of like that so you know, taking that shape from the connecting point, I'm just going to draw two little, bold, I'll put a dot here, over here, but it's really light, just to give me a general idea of where I should be heading to draw these uh, wings. And the shape is kind of like that, as it overlaps back to the um, area where it attaches to. Well, you know, I should have pulled it out a little bit more. Ah, I could have gone a little bit further. Wraps around again there. And we have our other wing. Comes back and wraps around there. You, know, you have that overlap with uh, both of the wings. I sure hope I didn't make the uh, <laughs> the uh, abdomen too short. I wonder if the abdomen's a bit longer. I think it like ends right there. It's hard for me to say, but okay. Now I want to do the uh, okay. So on its uh, thorax, I kind of see these other forms that kind of uh, follow along the body of it, and I'm trying to like really think about what they are or what the pattern means in any way. I'm not sure if it's a trait for attracting or something like that. But I do see those forms and they kind of look like they, they hang off. They kind of wrap around the form of that. The other thing, I'm seeing like a form here. It's hard for me to say if it's an actual form that kind of protrudes off of it. I think that's just like where it's dipping before the thorax connects to the abdomen. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, now for the legs. So usually with matchstick legs, I'll try to determine an area where I can kind of like put a little square to cut it off. And it's usually like these little junction points. And I try to, sometimes they're a bit more evident like over here and here where the legs are kind of like uh, clearly bending in 3D space and it's a little bit more uh, visible than it normally would be. but it's a bit obscure, like over here we can kind of see it, and I also drew that leg too far in. The leg should have been out a little bit more before I uh, drew it that way. Here it looks a bit rounded because of the perspective of it. And it's uh, over here. But yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna draw those forms. They're a bit simple. They just follow relatively straight and they connect to those initial points. Mm 
maybe a bit too thick. Um, but yeah, the, usually when I'm dealing with lines with these, it, they're relatively straight as they appear. Oh, the other thing here, there is a little point that I should have mentioned. It's very subtle, but it's like this initial connecting point, not always evident. As I would like for them to be. There's another one over here. Okay, now for that. Okay, now for the uh, second part, I'm seeing, well, like there's like one here. The back one's a bit obscured, so I'm trying to roll with it to the best of my ability. But yeah, as we go further along, there's like a tapering of these uh, matched sticks. It's like they're thicker during the initial connection and they kind of like thin out. The further you get closer to the end. Okay. Now that I look at a lot of these initial legs that I've drawn, considering how straight they are, I made it very uh, gestural. And I'm kind of wondering, maybe I should have made it more a series of connected straight lines instead. But it's hard to say. There's a lot about you don't know about insects until you've drawn them a few times, and I feel like you learn more every time, assuming it's the same type. As you may run into variations every now and then. Now there's like a cap off point, a bit more triangular. I have like little claw things to grasp plants and trees. Alrighty. Oh, you know what? I'm so stupid. I, I put those three things that I was talking about before on the uh, on the abdomen and not the thorax. Wow, that's what I get for working doing this at around eight thirty. Man, yeah, sorry, I had a busy day today, and I really didn't want to make this. I mean, I wanted to make it, but I mean, like, I probably shouldn't have. And uh, I've made other videos talking about how you shouldn't work when you're tired, yet I always see myself doing it. So please disregard those. Uh, oh, well. <laughs>
too far in now. Okay. Um, I was debating whether I should do the wings. I don't know if I should focus on them because I feel like the wings are a bit... There's a lot of confusing overlap and detail going on. I would say in this video I'm not going to cover them, um, but do know that if you do want to, they're probably easier to study in isolation because, you know, the, the wings are like semi-transparent and you're kind of getting... Um, it's kind of hard to tell what's what. And I feel like if I had the chance to study this particularly one a couple times, like with the wings separate, it would be easier to do than try to do them together. Because like one of them, you're going to have to like try to guesstimate how it's going. I mean, you could kind of see the, uh, the patterns, but it's very, maybe very difficult for you to do it. And I don't think I should really spend too much time doing it because I'm probably just going to mess it up. But, uh, yeah, so I hope this video kind of shows you and kind of helps what I saw. Although I'm seeing all of these mistakes here, like I keep thinking the eye should have extended a little bit more down when I'm making these finer comparisons. And I think it should have been more balding. But yeah, that's what I'm seeing and how I break this, uh, this dude down. And all of this. So I hope this video helps you. Um, if you have a question, please ask in the comments. Um, if you like the video, please like it. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much for listening throughout this uh, crane fly. And I thought it was a mosquito, but it, no, it's not. <laughs> they they kind of look like one. I don't know why, but uh, it must be related in some way. But yeah, uh, thanks again, and you have a great time. Bye.